Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of our slash tales from tech support. In today's episode, I need read-only SSH access to the admin user. Is DHCP your friend? Don't use me to lie for you. User needs a new email address. Before we get started make sure to subscribe so you will never miss a video. So let's get started. I need read-only SSH access to the admin user. So I support middleware infra in a pre-DevOps support model at an enterprise-scale corporation. We have automation that manages application teams SSH and web console access for prod app servers, as one reasonably should, such that their RSA keys are only present on the server during scheduled change windows, and they can't just hop on whenever they want and mess around with things they shouldn't. We've recently onboarded a new team to this service, where previously they had managed their own app servers. I've shown them how to use our access automation and set them up with everything they need to succeed. Or so I thought. This last week, one of their engineers opens a request to give them read-only access to the prod servers. I initially take this to mean read-only access to the app server web console, which I confirm has already been done. So I ask him to clarify what he means by this maybe he's having trouble getting into the console or something, and I can give him some documentation to help him out. No, he has read-only access to the web console just fine. He wants read-only access to the admin user ID. On Linux. He insists that they had this kind of access control on their old servers, and it's not working on the new server. I explain why this isn't how user IDs work, and suggest that maybe what he's looking for is to add a separate service account to these servers for his team and set permissions on all relevant directories so that that user ID can read them. Nope, that's not what he wants. He wants read-only access to the admin user ID. He wants all of his teammates to be able to log into that user ID whenever they want, and have read-only access to all files for that application server. He insists that he has logged into the server with the admin user ID and had permission denied errors for files that the admin user ID owns, and in fact writes to, and he needs the admin user ID to be given read-only access to those files for all of his teammates. At this point I've given up explaining that this is not how Unix user IDs work, and am feeling honestly a bit uneasy about the fact that this is an engineer who is responsible for installing and managing prod upgrades to their app server, so I decided to change tracks. Okay, can you please show me a screenshot of when this issue last occurred, or give me the path of the files you believe the admin user doesn't have access to? Now, I have no reason to believe the admin user is missing any of the required accesses. My team builds out all the directories in a contained directory structure owned by the admin user, and we have pretty strict access management controls in place. The intent here is to get him to show me how he came to the faulty conclusion to begin with, of course. His response is sure, I'm a bit busy, but I'll show you later. It's been a few days now, and I haven't heard back yet. Not holding my breath for a satisfying conclusion on this, because usually what will happen with these things is that he'll do a bit of reading or consulting with his senior teammates and figure out on his own that the issue he's running into is something completely unrelated. But admittedly a part of me is actually kinda invested now in finding out exactly what the actual issue is that this guy has misconstrued as we need read-only access to the admin Linux user ID. Is DHCP your friend? Guys, you like the the last so here is another from the same place. Large bank data center slash server admin blah blah blah. I summon after the weekend and have an alert on system that the DHCP server has an issue. I go to the server and it's nothing big. Server logs full server hung. I restart the server. All is good. 30 minutes later reports start coming in of DHCP conflicts all over the site. Affecting all the users and not the servers. Okay, servers are static. But why the users? Check the DHCP server and it running with no issues. Entire work the issue all shift. It doesn't make any seance. About one hour before the shift change the sole weekend tech come in and says what's going on. 
I say we have had DHCP issues all day, and he responds with odd, it wasn't working this weekend so I made a new one. I responded with did you check the DHCP server, and he said nah I just made a new one. I said show me. He took me to one of the comm closets where he took a workstation and installed the DHCP service on it and plugged it in. Now. Keep in mind. Nobody works the weekend, he's there to just watch the place. Servers are static so it only affected him. Back to the story, I said unplug that now and asked why didn't you just check the DHCP server. He responded with I just got back from class and wanted to try out what I learned. Needless to say, hundreds of data entry personnel did nothing for 24 hours. Moral of the story, great you went to school but exercise what you learn in a lab not in production. Don't use me to lie for you. Got a call this morning regarding Outlook. The first phone call was basic and easy fix. Nothing major or exciting. User states her email shows the paperclip of an attachment, but when she clicked the email, no attachment. I get connected and see the delta indicating her email is sorted into conversations. I expand it and show her it was an email in the conversation chain that had the attachment. She asked me to undo show as conversations. An hour later. Buddy on Teams asked me to take a call as this lady's manager was mad at me for undoing her show as conversations. Dollar me hi this is dollar me with IT what seems to be the trouble? Dollar manager yes one of your employees undid the security settings on dollar users outlook. Dollar me visible confusion umm? Which security setting? Dollar manager sorting emails by conversation or show as conversation has been a security mandate in our company since 2016. IT has mandated this since before I started here. Can you confirm this for me? It is at this moment I realized he was not talking to me, but talking down to dollar user loudly so I could hear it. Dollar me I'm sorry were you talking to me or dollar user? Dollar user he was talking to me. Dollar manager well both of you. I need you to confirm that this is a security measure. Team's message comes in from him. Just agree to it. Well my sound was muted so no ding came over the phone. I didn't actually click on the message, so the eyeball did not appear on his side in Teams. Dollar me no it's not. That's ridiculous. Password, 2FA, security program, and a slash V firewall program are the only security measures for email. Well. Only ones for client side. Server side has significantly more. Dollar manager so. It's not a security requirement? Dollar me nope. In fact we recommend against show as conversation as it leads to confusion. Teams pop-up is this the same dollar me I have on the phone? Dollar user so we don't have to use it? Dollar me well IT doesn't mandate it for security purposes. I can't speak to your direct supervisor's policies. I waited an hour before replying on Teams on my phone. Apologies. I guess Teams crashed in Citrix before you called. I did not see these pop-ups until I checked my cell phone just now. He didn't reply. User needs a new email address. Short one. Had a comment on our Outlook page saying I couldn't find out how to get a new email address. Ended up reaching out to the user and their reply was I need new generic dot shared at company email address but also need a personal one. As the form is a bit fiddly for exact email requests, got a ton of shared mailboxes that are office.office.team rather than office.team, I ended up submitting it for them to approve. Then got on to the second part of the user needing a personal one, bearing in mind I was contacting them on name at company. After some questions user just said they need to keep the one they have. Realized they took the you only can have one email address a bit too literally. User called me a savior for getting them sorted, and we had one more shared mailbox to the list we need to license. 